peace and grand rising to the sovereign original indigenous natural divine heirs. Today is September the 5th, 1442, on the ancient moon calendar, 1441 on the ancient sun calendar, 1737 on the Coptic calendar, and 2021 on the Greco-Roman calendar. And we could go all the way down the list. There are many calendars that we have that we can use. Um, we are the authors of them all. All rise and stand. This is a sovereign, original, indigenous, ancient, Al Moroccan, Moorish American, natural, divine, Article 3, court action. I am Sovereign Living Justice, Pauline Denise Ritchie, in capital Simone Shamolo, in red ink, in Popio Persona Sejurus, in Popio Solo, and in Popio Heredes, my free chosen sovereign appellation is Light Tajiri Bay, in Capita Simini Shonolo, in Red Ink, in Popia Persona Sujuris, in Popia Solo, and in Popia Heredes. No United States corporation, company, citizen, nor their agents, principles, heirs, or signs, nor any derivatives thereof has profound jurisdiction over any of the more. So um, the first thing that we want to do right off the bat is is uh, take a vote. We need to take a vote today. Um, the issue that we're bringing forth that we've been talking about for years is um, is it, it's always been about the the bottom line of many of the things of the of the ills and the perils and the you know the things that have been going on with the Moors. Um, the bottom line of a lot of that was had everything to do with fiat, okay, and fiat energy. And um, so we've been looking around and making sure uh, we did a whole bunch of things to lay the groundwork for where we are today. Uh, for example, in uh, 2018, we did a Universal Commercial Code 1 uh, lean affidavit on the United States Corporation Company, the black one in black ink in capital letters. And then we, uh, in 2019, we, we proclaimed the gold standard, which the gold standard never left for the Moors. Okay. Um, we know there are some things that happened earlier on, uh, for example, in 1933, and in 1906, and in uh, 1900, as well as uh, 1971, things have been happening uh, with regard to uh, the gold standard. And so I pulled some things with regard to the gold standard Act. And um, I want to just read them off really quickly so that we have some uh, prior information about the gold standard and where we are now and all that, uh, that applies to us because everything we say today is going to be relative to what's going on today, the gold standard, and everything that our ancestors have been telling us to do that we have absolutely done. The Gold Standard Act of the United States, and they put United States in blue, was passed in 1900, approved on March 14th, and established gold as the only standard for redeeming paper money, stopping by metallism, which had allowed silver in exchange for gold, and it was signed by President William McKinley. Um, and we know that, you know, we're not under any president, et cetera. We're not under any of those. Um, bimetallism is, back in the day, you used to be able to exchange, uh, used to be able to exchange gold, I mean silver for gold, where you, if you found silver, you could take your silver in and exchange it um, for gold. 
And um, so let's see. Um, here's what we would do. Um, let me let me just really quickly. I am going to let me just change the preferences really quickly. Okay. All right. So now what it says here about the gold standard is that we, you know, people would bring their silver in and exchange it and get gold for it at whatever the going rate was. Um, the act, the gold standard act made the de facto gold standard in place since the coinage act of 1873, whereby debt holders could demand reimbursement in whatever metal was preferred, but usually gold. That act made it a de jure gold standard alongside other major quote unquote European powers at the time. And again, <clears throat> we're the original European. We know that no one has any authority to talk about gold and silver except the Moors. Um, the European, the modern European was here to, is, is, was teaching us how to govern. Uh, according to what our prophet was saying, so that's why we look at what they're doing, but we don't do we don't participate and do what they're doing. Um, we clean it up and and generate it from our our own knowledge and study. So the difference between a de facto gold standard and a de jure gold standard is that a de facto gold standard will also allow bimetallism, which is other metals the money can be backed by either gold or other metals, okay? Um, this your gold standard is where it's gold only. Now, what are we saying about silver? Because that's, that's what's mentioned here. We're, what we're saying about silver is if you have silver, keep your silver. It is valuable. Um, if you're purchasing silver and whatever you're doing to make sure that you're taken care of for a rainy day, do so. Please do so uh, through your own study. Okay? We're not saying yay or nay, and we're not selling silver or pushing silver from our perspective, but those who want to have silver, you know, you're sovereign. You can have whatever you want. Um, so... It says here further, the act fixed the value of the dollar at 25 and 8 tenths grains of gold at 9 tenths fine, which is 90% purity, equivalent to 23.22 grains or 1.5046 grams of pure gold. The Gold Standard Act confirmed the United States' commitment to the gold standard by assigning gold a specific dollar value, which was just over 20.67 per troy ounce. And um, that's where we'll stop with, with reading that, because that, that's from Wikipedia, and we know Wikipedia. We kind of, you know, we do our research uh, outside of Wikipedia because Wikipedia is, is a bit, it can be tainted. Um, but we can see, so that's why we're using it, because we have the ability to use our third eye and see what really needs, what's really being said there and clean up and use what we need to use and not throw out the baby with the bathwater. So on August 15, 1971, Richard Nixon depegged the United States dollar from the price of gold, collapsing the Bretton Woods Act, and it was an act, and it's, it's an act until we make whatever we make a law, okay? Um, collapsing the Bretton Woods Act that paid the U.S. dollar to the price of gold. This depegging was set to end 50 years from its date, which is something that I did not know until recently. The 50 years ended on August 15, 2021, which is precisely 21 days ago. Okay. I did not know that what he did had a 50-year expiration. I thought that it was just something he did about their about their money because we have our own money. 
Um, so our ancestors set that date and timed our awakening and remembering process to coincide with past events so that the time continuum would not be broken. So today we fulfill yet another prophecy by our sovereign actions, which are built on our previous actions. And the previous actions being that in 2018 we did the lien uh, on the United States Corporation Company, uh, and it's a national government lien. All Moors spoke their sovereign will, uh, all who agreed to speak their sovereign will, uh, by way of that particular lien. And um, and then in 2019, in September, we put um, we announced the gold standard. Actually, in August we announced the gold standard. On August, I believe it was either August the third or August the sixth, we announced the gold standard being what we use. And then in September, we put 666 trillion on the public record in 2019, and how about on not even two weeks after that, they started talking about COVID-19. Okay. Now, today we're going to show where there's a direct correlation between every pandemic and plague that has ever been on this land and us doing what we did, what we're doing right now, okay, which is standing and governing outside of capitalism, black capitalism. So we have some historical things that we'll, we'll talk about today and point out to you so you can do your own research. And it's things, some of it we've heard before, some of it we have not. But it is all researchable. So we are here by placing, and when I say we, me and the ancestors and anyone who, who agrees to do so, we are hereby placing on the table a sovereign motion to set the fixed value of both the gold back more sovereign dollarium and the gold back United States dollar in red and all lowercase letters at 25 and 8 tenths grams of gold at 9 tenths fine purity, equivalent to 23.22 grams or 1.5046 grams of pure gold. The gold standard law does affirm the sovereign living original indigenous United States commitment to the gold standard by assigning a gold specific, but by assigning gold a specific dollar value or dollarium value at just over 20.67 dollarium per troy ounce. And the reason that we are, um, we know that we are worth hundreds of millions and trillions and trillions and trillions upon trillions. We know that. But we said it at, uh, this is my proposal, okay? This is my, is a proposal that, that we each can vote on today and have some, have say in how we proceed. But the reason we did it that way is, is even though we are wealthy beyond measure, the other nations of the earth, um, they're going to need to um, peg their national currencies also. And it's kind of difficult for them to peg their national currency if we do this at 50,000 um, dollarium per troy ounce of gold. But that's just for right now. That's just for right now. That's just the introduction of it. And as we know from from watching the Europeans do their acting, that we can at any time, you know, that fluctuates the price of gold and it's pegging to our more sovereign dollarium, it fluctuates up and up and up and up and up. And at some point I already know that it's going to get up to 50,000 uh, dollarium per troy ounce. So I know that's going to happen. I know it is. Um, but right now, in introducing it, we want to start right there at the same place that it was in um, 19, um, 1933 and also in 1900 because we want to pick up where our ancestors left off at. Because in 1900, when this gold standard act was put forth, 
that again was our our ancestors were speaking through that, but we still needed to um, we needed to consent and agree to it also, all of us together. But and then then our prophet Noble Dry Lee came, and he was doing all he could to to um, open our eyes so that we could see that yes, we're the heirs, and yes, we have the authority to do the things that we're doing. Um, but not everyone was in agreement with that. And our prophet knew at the time, because he said in the 2000s, the Moors are going to come into their own, and that's what we're doing now. So I, I want to place those values on the table and let us vote on uh, yay or nay with those values so that we can get uh, the other nations of the earth uh, connected with us. Now, I will say this about uh, what else prompted this move. Some of you were able to see my social media page, my Facebook page, Like the Jerry Bates Facebook page. I posted a video on there. Um, and not just that video, but I did some digging and some looking to see because I, I needed more than one um, source for the information that came forth in that video. But the video was about, it was talking about how they, how the, the corporate media has not said anything at all about the other nations of the earth coming together um, to put the gold standard in place for them too and to begin doing commerce that way because Bretton Woods ended August 15th they were able to see that it ended also. And the, the other nations of the earth that came forth are not, the appellations that I read are not appellations that you even hear in the corporate media. So it was not the corporate Xi Jinping and, you know, Vladimir Putin. and It, it was not the corporate versions of those people. It was sovereign indigenous more. And you can read the Appalachians and look and see, okay, okay those, are, those are the Moors. Uh, and the Moors are the only ones who have the authority to put a gold standard in place with, and peg their national currency to it. And we know that every move that we make with regard to the money and the gold, because see, what, if, if it's one thing we know, people follow the money. People follow the money, period. And if it's one thing we know, they are following what we're doing. They're seeing what we're doing. And we have no doubt in our hearts about that. No doubt in our minds about it either. That what we're doing is being closely watched. So um, we know that what they've done in watching the Bretton Woods, the 50 years ended because 1971 to 2021, that's, that's, that's 50. And our ancestors timed it perfectly. And when I say perfectly, I mean perfectly. They timed it perfectly. So in the last three weeks on the earth, there has been this um, space, and it's not really a space because we filled it already, but there's been this perception that, okay, Nothing is paid to gold. There's no gold back money on the earth, okay? And that's according to out there, not not with us, because we know we we have gold back money. We we've been said that, and then the issuing of the more sovereign dollar in the last few months, kind of like coincided with with Bretton Woods ending, and we didn't even know that that's what was happening until this past week hearing that, okay, the nations have come together and they're going to implement the gold standards on their land. And the only way they could do that is if we did it first. And we did do it back in 2019. And as soon as we did that and, and put that $666 trillion on the record, COVID hit. So what we want to do is is, is – this is this is the motion for today is 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 
the goal is to solidify the more sovereign delirium as the gold back money with this um, proclamation and this law put on the public record. But it has to be done like everything else that we do by vote. So um, at this time, we want to go ahead and take a vote. And I'm going to, um, you all know we're going to have a uh, few of the hybrids you know, probably doing whatever. But as soon as they start talking, we'll put them out. We're going to open up the chat as well so that we can um, take the vote. And if you would, please uh, speak your vote so that we can hear. Um, as many as can star six and speak your vote, go ahead and do so. But let me let me go ahead and take it out of lecture mode and I'll be booting them as quickly as I can. <laughs> okay. Um, and then let me go ahead and, and um, open up the chat as well. Just a moment. So that we can take our vote. Just one moment. I want to make sure that everyone can vote. Okay. Uh, the chat is open and the lines are open as well. You can go ahead and um, go ahead and, and voice your vote on yay or nay. Yay that you want um, the gold, uh, the more sovereign delarium to be pegged to gold. Uh, according to what's on the screen here that we just read out. Um, unite, uh, just one moment. Let me read it out one more time. That the value of the Moorish sovereign delarium be fixed. The value of both the gold-backed Moorish sovereign delarium and the gold-backed United States dollar at 25 and 8 tenths grains of gold at 9 tenths fine purity or 90% purity equivalent to 23.22 grains or 1.5046 grams of pure gold. So um, if you would, please go ahead and you can start six to uh, place your vote on the record. Uh, and of course, we know that as soon as we, as soon as we figure out which one is, is them, we'll get them out of here. We know that's not you. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, Star six to those who, who want to vote. Uh, we see the votes coming in in the chat. Islam. Justice Theodore, yay. Go ahead, nobility. Justice Theodore, <laughs> yay. Islam. 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 Right, Cynthia Ann Bay, Islam. Islam. Yay. Melanie Turner Lawrence Bay, yay. Islam. Gregory Tariq Bay, North Carolina Territory, yay. Islam. Malik Phil Bay, Islam. Crackhead Porsche, man. Crackhead Porsche, man. Eddie JP, North Carolina Territory, yay. Islam. Crackhead Theodore, man. Just one moment, y'all. Keep going. Go ahead, Moore. Go ahead. I killed. Didn't Yay. Um, Ronnie L. Bay, yay. Islam. Carol and the Wizards, yay. Islam. Come here. Not the base, this is territory, yay. Alibaba El Camino Bay, fuck no. Islam. 
Sully Bay, South Carolina Territory, yeah. See Petite L, man. Just one moment. We're getting them, y'all. Hold on. Just, just keep going, more. It's mine. Yes, we're we're yes, putting them out as, as we see. Yes, Perez, baby. Go ahead. Orlando Bay, nay. Yeah. 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 We got you, Justice. Um, Musa Ju uh, yes. Bay L Nay. Hold on for just one moment. Let me get them out of here. Al Beyond L, Governor of Federal Way Nay. Hold on. We getting them. I just need them. Need one or two more of them to say something, and I believe we'll have them all. Y'all know they don't want us to do this because that means the end of the fiat is gone anyway. Okay. Go ahead, Nobility. That's fine. Cynthia and Bay. All right, we got them. Okay, we got them, Empress Portia. That was the last one right there. Just one moment. Okay. So let us, um, the, the meeting is locked. Islam. Or are you talking about trolls? And yes, Thank you in the chat. We see, we see in the chat. Justice on Longo, we know, we know. It's wrong. Okay. So all of those who voted, if you don't mind, go ahead and vote again really quickly, and that way we will have a clean, clear vote here. I think we got all of them out of here. Yezreel Peretz Bay, North Carolina. This is Bay. Hey. Hold on. I got him. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nobility. <laughs> Justice Cynthia Ann Bay. Islam Nobility. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Empress Cynthia. Well, on it. On the last point. Marie Yes. Yeah. Empress Sheila L. Is on. Is on. Is on. Yay. Is on. Oh, Mike. I kill. I kill. Can then be easily L. Yay. Is on. Under yay, D. Lauren Rasul L. Yay. Islam, thank you. Amo Salaho Tebe, yay. Islam. Colleen Denise Richie, Lawhorn. Yay. Islam. Boy, well, we're going to look back on this one day. Cynthia <laughs> and Day. Nay. Yes. Cynthia and Bay. Nay. Cynthia and Bay. Cynthia and Bay. Nay. Cynthia and Bay. Nay. Grand failure. Cynthia and Bay. Grand failure. Cynthia and Bay. Kelly for territory. Cynthia okay, and Bay. So here's what we will do. Now, now that we have the vote, now that we have the vote, it is a unanimous vote. Um, are there any other Moors that want to vote? If you do, uh, put something in the chat and, and we'll unmute the line so that you can vote. I believe we do have a unanimous. We didn't have any, um, any names from any lawful voters. 
Okay. So, um, this vote does hereby, uh, let me go ahead, on the record, for the record, and letting the record show that we, the people, do hereby make the law that the fixed value of both the gold-backed Morris Sovereign Delarium and the gold-backed United States dollar uh, at 25 and 8 tenths grains of gold at 9 tenths fine purity, which is 90% purity, equivalent to 23.22 grains, which is 1.5046 grams of pure gold. This sovereign justice stands as law, Islam. Okay, so now that we have that on the record, um, what we can do um, at this point, thank you for everyone who voted in, in the chat. Um, and Empress Sheila, I see, I see where the price of gold today is very, very different from what we just put on the record. We want to set it so that the other nations of the earth can have a level, even ground with us in terms of what of their national currency and what they're coming to the table with in terms of national currency. So, um, for example, uh, Zimbabwe. We know that Zimbabwe, um, which is actually not Zimbabwe, it's Rhodesia. Um, that's the real uh, sovereign land of Rhodesia. And we know that they had some colonialism and some capitalization and some capitalism going on there and some denationalization going on there, and they did everything that they could to get uh, lawful money going. And anytime you allow the hybrids to be involved in anything that you're doing, they're going to corrupt it in terms of leading the way in the process. You can't they cannot be leading in processes that, that are that have everything to do with us. And they allowed that in or they, you know, they agreed to that in, in uh Rhodesia and it just turned out very badly in terms of the value of, of what they were trying to do. They were doing everything they could to help the people. But having corruption in their system is what messed everything up. And so we are not allowing that corruption to happen. In our voting process, we know that those are hybrids attempting to sideline and throw things off. That's what hybrids do. Um, but our vote stands as law. It is unanimous. And um, we're going to move forth in that manner. So now with Bretton Woods and all that Nixon did and all of that, all of that has been taken care of as of today in fulfillment of the prophecy that our prophet Noble Jew Ali said about us. He said that when it all comes down to it, it's all coming back into the hands of the Asiatics. So we're doing our part to make sure that that happens. He said that the economy would grind to a halt, and when it starts back up again, it's going to start back up in the favor of the Moors. We're making sure that that happens. So now, with this on the public record, it is a nunk pro tunk vote. And that means that anyone who's used Delarium for anything previously, we can, that it's still valid. It is absolutely backed by gold. And we're doing this with the other nations of the earth in mind who met last week to, um, they, they've been watching what we're doing, and they put their gold standard on the public record without the United States Corporation Company. And so that is something that we have been saying, that we are without the United States, and that's, what, that's how we're going to move forth. Um, we do have subjects. Those subjects are not a part of the United States Corporation Company, so let's, you know, let's um, move forth with that in mind as well. So now, uh, I want to um, go through historically what all of this has to do with what's going on today. 
and I will say this to start all of that off. There has not been a single time in our history that we stepped outside of this cap that capitalism system that the hybrids didn't pull a plague move. So every plague that has ever come on our land, and they, it's not really on our land, it's, it's a corporate plague. But every plague that has happened happens in the corporate corrupt system. We're outside of the jurisdiction of COVID-19, and anyone who does not understand that, just do the study on that that is a jurisdictional claim right there that we properly rebutted. So let's just look at plagues and black capitalism, which have a long, long, super long history. I did not realize that everything we've been studying and the dates that we know those things happened has everything to do with what's happening right now. So today we're looking at the timeline of our past up to the present so that we can truly see what's happening today. What is the connection between red ink and all lowercase letters, and what does that have to do with the plague known as coronavirus? The answer is every time the indigenous people consent to black capitalism, a plague comes on the land. And it's not really on the land, it's in the capitalism system. Every time we begin to go back to the ways of our ancestors, who are the red nation, because remember, they used to call us the red men, the red nation. It wasn't because of red skin. It was because, um, it was because of the writing, okay? It was because we used red ink. And when you talk about the copper colored people, we're not even talking about skin color there either. We use copper to make the red ink. And there are companies out there overseas right now that still use copper to make the red ink, still. So um, just one moment. Let me go ahead and thank you for voting. I'm going to go ahead and um, um, I'm going to turn off the chat so that um, there aren't any distractions from what we're saying um, and from what we've done so that we can be clear on all that's being done. Okay. There. Now, um, that way we've muted all of the, um, all anything that has to do with those that are here to disrupt the troll, we've muted all of that. So now, every time the indigenous people consent to black capitalism, a plague comes, becomes a part of that. Every time we begin to go back to the ways of our ancestors, the red men, our land heals itself because of our actions. So that's why we were called the red nations and the red people and the red man. And um, we did, in doing my research, we did use copper as the ink or the pen that we use. Um, so I, in looking at all of this, I started looking at the timeline of pandemics and the major events that have happened and how capitalism and our getting rid of capitalism, black capitalism, that. That has taken place repeatedly so many times in our history that we have got to keep this information going in our lineage. We've got to tell our heirs, don't use black ink in capital letters. We have to tell them that. Because in looking back through, every single time a plague came, it came in that corporate structure and any of the more that were in that corporate structure got were affected by it in one way or another, whether it's 
having to wear a mask or thinking you have to wear a mask to um, jails, prisons, disease, all of that, okay? So I look back, and this is not even as far back as it goes. It goes back even further than this. But I started at 541 AD with the Justinian plague because I wanted us to look at what happened in the past. Many have heard of the Justinian deception. The Justinian deception has everything to do with contracts and black ink in capital letters. Okay, so take the time and do the study on the Justinian deception so that you will see that uh, that what happened was that was when the emperor Justinian, he, first of all, he amalgamated with a foreigner, okay? And his this foreigner that he amalgamated with was called Theodora, <laughs> okay? She, okay, Justinian, Emperor Justinian allowed her to go, this foreigner, to go and deal with all of these other foreign nations when it came to his, his duty to the people, he let her speak because he was so in love. And so he actually, his goal in his mind was to fix the law because there were so many things wrong with the law that he wanted to make it so that his wife, who was foreign and did not have his original indigenous status, okay, he wanted to start putting some laws in place to help her and her people, okay? And he went about doing things. Um, you can read some of, the, some of the main things that he put in place. I believe it was the civil... Uh, civil, I'll have to look it back up again, but he put something in place that, that is similar to um, to okay, let me just look it up so that, look it back up again because I had it on my screen and I want to be sure um, just one moment that I quote it correctly. Civil he put a civil code in place. And the civil code that he put in place, though, is called the Code of Justinian, uh, Corpus Juris Civilis. So he was thinking about her, okay, when he put civil, uh, this, this um, civil, corpus juris civilis in place. When he put that in place, he was thinking about her. And he was trying to assist her and help her and her people. So in the interim, though, when he was, as he was trying to help her, she was actually taking all the documents and the laws that he wrote and putting them in black ink in capital letters. He would do them in red, and then she would take them and do them in black and present them to all these nations that he was trying, that, that, that she was supposedly speaking for him, representing him. That's what she did. So when she started doing that, the Justinian plague appeared. First appearing in Egypt, the Justinian plague spread through Palestine and the Byzantine Empire and then throughout the Mediterranean. Let me tell you that these plagues have everything to do with decapitalization, black ink, and capital letters. That's, re that's the real plague. And the minute we start getting rid of that, because we were just starting to talk about red ink and all lowercase letters back in 2019. And then in January of 2020, we started saying, okay, this is how we should be doing things because we're looking at this and this is how we should be doing things in red and all lowercase letters. They heard that. They heard that. And before you know it, 
it's a lockdown. And the economy is going into the pit. But let's just let's keep looking at how they introduced their plagues and then the effect that it had. The plague changed the course of the empire, and that's empire in lowercase letters, squelching Emperor Justinian's plans to bring the Roman Empire back together and causing massive economic struggle. When they say Roman Empire, remember now, we were the Roman Empire in red and all lowercase letters. The other, we were ancient Rome. And then they were corporate Rome, just like we're the ancient Americans, the ancient Al Moroccans. They have a, a corporate Morocco and a corporate America. In black ink and capital letters is what they had or what they were claiming. So just Emperor Justinian was trying to put everything back right in red, but his he decided to, you know, amalgamate with foreigners, and she undid everything he did. And it says that the, this plague caused massive economic struggle. Now, if it's, a, if it's a plague, how is that affecting the economy? It's because the creditors are not the creditors anymore, and that corpses are trying to take the place of creditors. It is also credited with creating an apocalyptic atmosphere that spurred the rapid spread of Christianity. Now, we're not mad at Christians, but the fact of the matter is corporate Christianity, not the real one, but every single time that we allow corporate commercial mercenaries to, to assign black ink and capital letters to anything that we're doing, such as what the corporate commercial Christianity did, not the real Christianity, but the corporate fake one, guess what it did? Most of us grew up in church. And every time we signed a tithe envelope, and every time we signed um, a visitor agree, you know, the visitor log, Every time we signed um, the appreciation card for the minister, for the pastor, those signatures were always done in black ink usually, either black or blue, which is both are beneath our status. And they would take those signatures and denationalize us on their 501c3 rolls. Okay? and then turn those autographs over to the Pope. And the Pope would say, yep, we got them again. Plague time. And so that Christianity spread, that type of Christianity, and they have Christianity with a capital C there, so that's what we're talking about. That type of Christianity spread because there has to be a covering somewhere, and if we're ascribing to black ink in capital letters, that means that we're not even observing the laws of Islam and Islamic Muslim law. And again, this is not about a religion. It's not about a religion. It's a, our religion is the law. But Christianity, pick corporate, commercial Christianity, spreads all everywhere when we step outside of red ink and all lowercase letters and accept capitalism as our identity. And we go into contract with them. And we sign their stuff instead of writing our own on our own government letterhead. And we start using their fake money instead of our real dollarium. How do you know the difference between real Christians and fake Christians? The fake ones keep pushing fiat all over the place, and they act like they can't live without it. If your God is who you say your God is, then you can do without fiat. Why? Because you're supposed to be about loving God. And sharing Christianity, you can do that without pushing a whole bunch of fiat everywhere. You don't need a gigantic cathedral to tell people about your God. 
just like we don't have one, so to speak. We we do though, because we you know we're the heirs to all of them, including the churches. So, as long as we were ascribing to black ink and capital letters, then Christianity, the fake commercial Christianity, does spread. And that's the same, you know, where the fake pope and there's no separation between quote unquote church and state because the pope is putting all of his money behind the policy enforcers and the fake judges and the fake jails and all of that. Okay, that's the Christianity that spreads when we don't stay in our proper status and and actually govern the land in red and all lowercase letters. That's how that type of Christianity, which is enslavement, spreads. So here it says recurrences over the next two centuries eventually killed over 50 million people, 26% of the world population. And when they say killed, again, they don't go and just chop everybody's heads off and shoot everybody. All they do is denationalize, and we, cons- we, we agree or consent to denationalization. That's what the killing is. So when Bill Gates is talking about depopulation, it's going to happen one way or the other. Either we kill the corpses because they say corpses are persons, either we kill the corpses by our lean done competently in our court actions in red and all lowercase letters, or they denationalize all the moors and spread commercial Christianity. And we go back under, you know, if that were what we were going to, but that's, that's not what we, we were not doing that. We're not doing that, period. We, we put that spell out there and broadcast that right now. That ain't happening. So now this is, this is, this is key right here too. It says, it is believed to be the first significant appearance of the bubonic plague, which feet in large lymphatic gland and is carried by rats and spread by fleas. Now, that is cold Masonic language. Let me tell you about the cold Masonic language that that is right there. Because, see, they can put that in history books all day long, and if we don't know how to read and we don't realize that they're really talking about capitalism, we'll miss the whole boat like we had been previously thinking they're teaching us history about some rats and some fleas, when that's not really what they're saying. Justinian sought to fix the legal system by codifying new laws to help the citizens with civil rights. However, he also married a foreigner, Theodora, who he allowed to do much of his political decrees and documents. She was a commoner who began changing the documents as he put them forth, He didn't rebut her work, and he did sign black contracts with other foreign nations at her behest. The contracts that Justinian signed were black and capitalized, which also meant that those who followed him as their emperor were denationalized by way of corporate black documents, namely the birth recordings, the birth recordings. And back then they used to record the birth in the Bible. And if you're recording the birth in a Bible and the Bible has all black lettering and capital letters in it, what are you really recording? Aren't you recording a death? Thus, a plague was introduced to cover the fraud. As a side note, the lymphatic gland symbolizes the communication system of the body. So anything that gets into your lymphatic gland is going to go throughout your whole body. When the lymphatic is corrupted, the whole body becomes corrupted over time. And finally, When they talk about the rats, the rats during this scenario symbolize the informants listed on the birth record. Because, you know, in quote-unquote mafia speak, a rat is someone who's telling some stuff, telling on people. Well, that's code word for the, the ones listed as informants on the birth records, and in this case it was our mothers. 
that 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 symbolized. I'm not calling anyone's mother a rat. I'm not calling my mother a rat. I'm saying they were the informants listed on the birth records, or they were listed as informants on the birth records. They weren't informing because they didn't know. While the fleas symbolized those who ran when they should have stood the testing that would have stopped the plague from infesting the indigenous people. And you can do more. Um, you can do more um, study on the Justinian deception and the Justinian plague of, of 541 um, A.D. So then what happened after that? Because, see, we have to, in order for anything to really be valid, it's good to have a pattern, to show a pattern. Okay. 1350, the Black Death. Why did they call it the Black Death? Because it was happening again. The indigenous people were accepting black ink in capital letters, and it was killing them in terms of commerce. It says responsible for the death of one-third of the world population. Now, how is it that every so often, every few hundred years, a whole third of the Earth's population is dying? And nobody's learning anything from that. Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's rebutting it. Nobody's saying, hey, we had seven plagues that took out one-third of the earth. What are we doing about that? This second large outbreak of the Pubonic Plague possibly started in Asia and moved west in caravans. Entering through Sicily in 1347 AD when plague sufferers arrived in the port of Messina, it spread throughout Europe rapidly. Dead bodies became so prevalent that many remained rotting on the ground and created a constant stench in the city. What does that mean? That means that they were they were traveling, and, and you can see that travel is a big part of this whole pandemic piece where they keep talking about this place is not accepting people from this place, and this place is not accepting people from this place. They're hinting to us. They're giving us hints. Because anyone coming through your port, they need to have documents that state that Yes, you come through. You come through this port. You got to be either one of us, or you have to have the right nature to come through here. See, Ellis Island was one of those one of those places where they came through the port, but we we did not say to them, "You're not coming through here unless you sign this right here and say that you're going to be in your proper status the whole time." We should we should have been at Ellis Island saying anybody coming through here, you got to be one of us, or you gonna sign these papers and take this uh, uh, this affirmation and 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 proclaim your allegiance and your subject status. So there's always a travel attachment to any plague that's coming and going. Somebody coming somewhere, somebody going somewhere, and they bring in plague with them. What are they they bringing? black documents, passports, birth certificates, et cetera, travel documents, and, and travel doc not travel documents, but passports. It says, England and France were so incapacitated by the plague that the country called a truce to their war. What's war? War is using war names. Nom de guerre is a war name. That's that name in black ink in capital letters. The British feudal system collapsed. Feudal system. So now we're talking about money. Why are we talking about money? And when you're talking about a feudal system, that's not even real money. What does that have to do with a plague? It says it collapsed when the plague changed economic circumstances and demographics. How do demographics change if it's just the measles or smallpox? How is demographics changing? Demographics has everything to do with identity. Identity of the people. Who, what are you, who do you identify as? It says ravaging populations in Greenland, Vikings lost the strength to wage battle against the native populations and their exploration of North America halted. Back then, we said, nope, we're the red people, we're going to stay red, we're going to write in red, we're going to do everything in red, we're going to wear the copper, because we mined a lot of copper, so that we could have plenty of ink. 
and we did everything in red. And when we said, nope, we're staying in our proper status, guess what they had to do? Get off this land. Their exploration of North America halted. No, their exploitation of the original indigenous heirs halted. Whenever black capitalism tries to enter our land, there's always a migration of foreigners onto the land and the plague is brought in at the port, i.e. passports, birth certificates, and other documents that supposedly identify persons. Now, where are we at? We're at 1350. Let's take a jump on up to 1491. 1491 is a very important date for the Moors, as are all dates, because it's all about us anyway. As an introduction to the next plague, let's take a look at um, the Moors and what took place in 1491. Khalif Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ali signed the black capitalized version of the Treaty of Granada on November 25, 1491. Well, what does that mean? That means that everybody under him who's saying we're under Khalif Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ali. Well, if you're under him and he signed a black capitalized treaty of Granada, then that means everybody's agreeing to be black. And this signing on November 25, 1491 of that black treaty is what they were celebrating when they were celebrating Thanksgiving. Thanks for giving us a bunch of blacks. Thanks for giving us a bunch of heirs who don't know that they should not be using black ink and capital letters. This treaty, written in black ink and capital letters, claimed to give King Ferdinand Corporation and Queen Isabella Corporation jurisdiction over the Moors who chose to use black capitalized names, i.e. nom de guerre war names. Shortly thereafter, the anthropomorphic story of Christopher Columbus is used to cover up what really took place in 1492. Christopher Columbus is really anthropomorphic, really very anthropomorphic. This land was called Columbia also, after Empress Columbia. Okay? And when the land was called Columbia after Empress Columbia, that's where the district for Columbia, which is over here at Seattle Territory, Washington Territory, Khalifa Territory, all the way up to uh, British Columbia, all the way up to Alaska, which is really Al Aqsa, all of that throughway is Columbia. That's why they call it British Columbia, and why they call why the Columbia River is here and then all the way down to Columbia, South America, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, uh, Olmec territory as well. All of that is Columbia. Also, it's also Asia, it's also Northwest Africa, it's also Asia, it's also um, Morocco, so it's also Turtle Island, it's all of those. Just depend on where you are on the timeline. And so when they talk about Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, that means that, that someone put the people on the land by, Christ, by, by use of Christianity and Constantinople policies. That's what the Christopher part is all about. Is them talking about he sailed the ocean blue? No. Somebody put some moors out there out to sea and then said we were lost at sea. This is 1492, one year, not even one whole year. After Khalif Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ali signed the Treaty of Granada, and we know that on January 1st, that 1492, they celebrate the fall of the Red House. Why do you think they call it the fall of the Red House? Because the people who wrote in red stopped doing it. Anything that came from us came in red writing, not black. 
And that's why it's called the Red House, because you would know our documents coming and going. You would know where they came from when you saw the red. Just like in the Bibliotelial text, the red letter editions, the, 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 the Christ speaks in red. So the signing of the Black Treaty without proper rebuttal by the heirs, because even if someone signs a treaty and says, this is for all Moors, any Moors can say, nope, that's not for me. You signed it. Y'all signed it. Y'all agreed to that. I'm just not going to agree to it. It's good that we all agree because that's how we govern, is we are all in agreement. We speak with one voice. But that one voice is not any one per, one more's voice. It's all the voices of all the more. So by signing the Black Treaty without proper rebuttal, Khalif Abu brought about plagues and disease. And not him, but the signing of the document brought about the plagues and the disease because then Christopher Columbus and, and, and Queen Isabel Corporation and King Ferdinand Corporation, they can then start, quote, unquote, treating the heirs in their fake hospital, animal hospitals, and giving the heirs animal education in black ink and capital letters like they taught us. They said use a number two pencil. And make sure you start every sentence with a black with a, a capital letter. They could have picked any other color, but they have the trademark on that one. That's that's the one for the dead. And we talked about that. So now this this happened. The signing of this treaty happened 1491. What happens in 1492? The Columbian Exchange. And here comes the plagues and the diseases. Following the arrival of the Spanish in the Caribbean, diseases such as smallpox, measles, and bubonic plague were passed along to the native populations by the Europeans. Now, this is some stuff they wrote, and I'll put the link to the website where this information came from. With no previous exposure, these diseases devastated indigenous people, with as many as 90% dying throughout the North and South continents. And again, when they're talking about dying, they're talking about denationalization first. Upon arrival on the island of Hispaniola, Christopher Columbus encountered two uh, encountered the Teano people, population 60,000. By 1548, the population stood at less than 500. This scenario repeated itself throughout the Americas. Now, the people. The Teano people are still there. It's still 60,000 or more of them, probably way more of them than that. But are they counted as Teano people when they go to do commerce? Are we stating who we really are when we go to do commerce, or are they thinking that they're doing something with another citizen? That's where the population decreased and the killing off of massive amounts of people happens. It happens on paper first. It happens on paper first. There's always paper that has, makes that happen. In 1520, the Aztec Empire was destroyed by a smallpox infection. The disease killed many of its victims and incapacitated others. It weakened the population, so they were unable to resist Spanish colonizers and left farmers unable to produce needed crops. Now, what does, a, what does smallpox have to do with unable to produce needed crops? What, is, what does that have to do with anything? Because the smallpox that they're talking about is commercial. And the farmers couldn't produce needed crops because just like today, everything grounds ground to a halt. Because the indigenous original heirs, who are the creditors to all the nations of the earth, thought they were black. Research in 2019 even conclu in 2019 even concluded that the deaths of some 56 million Native Americans, and we know we're not Native Americans, we're the heirs, but that's how they refer to us, 
Native Americans in the 16th and 17th centuries, largely through disease, may have altered Earth's climate. As vegetation growth on previously tilled land drew more CO2 from the atmosphere and caused the cooling event, the great cool down. When we are in our proper status and we're doing everything as the red people who we are, in red and all lowercase letters, We've already been told that when we're in our proper status, that there's going to be some um, heating up of the earth and that the frequencies are going to rise and that um, anything that's not natural is not going to be here. Okay? That, again, we give off a different energy when we're in honor and doing things honorably. We give off a different energy. We know that. So now this is this is uh, 1492 and the plague that that accompanied the the you know us some of us some of us because see not all Moors gave in to that. Some Moors throughout the ages have always written in red and all lowercase letters and they just moved back and let everyone else exercise their free will. And if free will led you into slavery, then that was your choice. We can't make that choice anymore. Because this time, this is like where we are right now, you don't want to make that choice. You want to, you want to do it the right way, honorably. Red ink, all lowercase letters. Let that be the foundation of everything you do. And then what you do, what you build on that foundation will be what you build on that foundation. But let all of the foundations start with red documents and all lowercase letters. Because capitalism and colonialism and denationalization comes with disease, death, um, no commerce of our own, and all of that. So right now we're talking about 1492. Let's move on up in time and see what happened. Another plague, some more denationalization, and more of the same. Then came the Great Plague of London, which introduced the Seta KV Act of 1666. The Great Plague of London, 1665. See, we, we don't hardly hear that much about that Great Plague of London, do we? We don't hardly hear anything about it. Look how many people it took out, supposedly. The Great Plague of London, 1665. Let me make that a little smaller so we can see. It says, a graph showing the huge increase in death during the Great Plague of London in 1665 and 1666. The solid line shows all deaths, and the broken line shows deaths attributed to the plague. It's no coincidence that there's always a plague and then there's some major document that comes out after that, either before or after, right before or right after. 1665, the Great Plague of London, it was nothing but a plague of, of Moors not knowing that we're the heirs and that we should not be giving in to black ink and capital letters, capitalism. In another devastating appearance, here comes the bubonic plague, carried by rats and fleas. The bubonic plague led to the deaths of 20% of London's population. As human death tolls mounted and mass graves appeared, hundreds of thousands of cats and dogs were slaughtered as the possible cause and the disease spread through ports, uh, ports P-O-R-T-S, ports along the Thames River. So you're not talking about cats and dogs now. If you're talking about port, you're not talking about cats and dogs. You're talking about documents. You're talking about when people come in, they tell you you can't come in unless you have their United States Corporation Company passport. 
the worst of the outbreak tapered off in the fall of 1666 around the same time as another destructive event, the Great Fire of London. Have there not been major fires on this land mass in the last two years? Yes, there has. There's a correlation there. So now let's go back up to our prophet's time. 1918, our prophet, Noble Drew Ali, was trying to wake the Moors up, doing everything he could to wake the Moors up, everything he could, because he knew, he saw, he, he knew the history. He knew where the Seda KV Act came from. So he said, we got to wake up. Everybody got to wake up. Everyone has to wake up. And let's just look at what happened. The avian born flu that resulted in 50 now, and look up the word avian so that you know that they're really not talking about something that came from a bird or something that came from a, you know, because the, 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 and change the spelling of avian just a little bit so that you can see what it really means. The avian born flu that resulted in 50 million deaths worldwide. The 1918 flu was first observed in Europe, the United States, and parts of Asia before swiftly spreading around the world. At the time, there were no effective drugs or vaccines to treat this killer flu strain. Wire service reports of a flu outbreak in Madrid in the spring of 1918 led to the pandemic being called the Spanish flu. That is not true, actually. They called it the Spanish flu because a lot of us were speaking Spanish at the time. Because remember our prophet said that if you learn another language, let it be Spanish? Or at least they, that's what they say he said. We don't know that for sure because we didn't hear it come out of his mouth. But it is stated that he said that. By October, Hunt Hundreds of thousands of Americans died, and body storage scarcity hit crisis level. Body storage scarcity. But the flu threat disappeared in the summer of 1919 when most of the infected had either developed immunities or died. Now, when we look back at the documents from that we're seeing that people say come from the prophet's time, those documents are in black ink and capital letters. But we don't know that. We don't know. We don't know because we weren't there. And by the time a, a black quote unquote copy machine gets a hold of some documents, you really don't know. We don't know whether the prophet was using red or black. I I'm just proposing that I think he was using red ink too. But by the time it gets copied and copied and copied and copied and everything else, we don't know. We don't. We do not know. But I know our prophet was doing everything he could to wake everyone up. And then when he and and now it's 1918 and he's saying. The old Canaanite temple, 1913. Um, and then 10 years after um, 1918 is 1928. He sat down at Cuba. And they're telling him at Cuba, you all are the heirs. All of this is going on. And then someone in the temple and this is one thing I like about the temples. I, we don't do 501c3 uh, because we know that's compromised. 
yes, it's compromised. Every five every five oh one C three is compromised. Why? Because when they report their membership to the IRS, they have to put it in all lowercase letters to get their benefit, and they don't tell the people you should be putting everything in all lowercase letters. But how about this? Ask to see their tax return. Ask to see every page of their tax return. Now, and I'll say this about, even about that. When I was growing up, there were some 501c3s in my family, and they did not know, this is how I know they did not know what was going on. Because the ones who would not put, who would not um, kowtow to them, they would send in a CPA or an attorney to threaten them a little bit and then say, we'll take over your books. We'll take over your books. That way you, you don't have to tell people because you don't even know that that hybrid attorney or that modern European attorney who, who came in is turning around and you give them the names of the members, and they turn around and put everybody's name in, in, in all lowercase letters so they can get the benefit and you get a tax bill. I'll move forward. And that I know from firsthand watching it back in the day. So now we see 1918. Some pandemic, <laughs> some pandemic, but they're looking at travel documents and they're looking at, you know, they're talking about vaccines and they're talking about the economy at the same time, all in the same breath. That means there's more going on than it looks like. So then what happened in 19... 68, the Hong Kong flu, pandemic flu, 1968. So that word is not new, and that strategy is not new. It's an old strategy. It's old. They've been pulling that one for hundreds of years, hundreds. And even back in 1918 and all of that, they were masked up, wearing masks just like the ones today. And you mean to tell me they still don't know that masks don't work? And some of them saying it works and some saying it don't? Okay, we can go all day with that, but we won't. 1968 pandemic. I knew there was going to be a pandemic in 1968 because of the way that the financial system was moving around. In 1967 and 68 and 69, what were the Moors doing? Marching for civil rights like we were citizens and trying to fit into a citizen system. I won't call any names about who was leading all those marches. We can just look back at history and see. And then... I'll tell you this about that. Around that same time, I knew to look for a pandemic around that time because I know what happened around that time. And in 1968, 1969, 1970, the IMF and the, the International Monetary Fund and the Bank of International Settlements, that is when they introduced special drawing rights to all the other nations of the earth. Why? because they knew the Moors were nowhere near going to proclaim a gold standard and wake up and, and produce their own money. They knew that. So they just said, nope, we got to do it. And not only are we going to do that, but we're going to kill off the leader guys, the ones that's leading these marches, let's just kill them. Let's kill them off and then... We'll tell the Moors, the sleeping Moors, we'll say, hey, sleeping Moors, we want to have 
uh, a holiday named in honor of your leader, God. But we need your signature to do it. And so how many signatures did they collect from the Moors back in 1969, 70, 71, et cetera? How many? Millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of black ink signatures. That's how they got us to consent to corporate status whole hog. And then what happened? This is all amidst the pandemic. They're saying, we got to get these more. We need some more some autographs from these. So they, they're, they, they're not ready to wake up yet. They're still not ready. So let's just, let's just kick it. Let's create a whole new economic system. We can do whatever we want, and we're going to reap the benefit, and the Moors are going to suffer. And suffer we did. So... Here it says the Hong Kong flu, also known as the 1968 flu pandemic, was a flu pandemic whose outbreak in 1968 and 69 killed between 1 and 4 million people globally. That's how many people they denationalized and, 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 and put in black ink in capital letters. It is among the deadliest pandemics in history and was caused by the H3N2 strain of the influenza A virus, whatever. And if we look a little further into that, I'm sure we'll see some etymology in the words and in the science that says that's not really what they're talking about. Yes, many more is on the land were claiming civil rights, which is not our status at all. And then right after this is when Nixon did that 1971 thing, right? That's where he said, okay, we have all these signatures. We don't even need a gold standard. The Morris got us. We got the creditors. What do we need gold for? They're the real gold. We got all these autographs from them in black ink. That's why he did what he did and wasn't scared to do it and didn't go to jail. because they had all of our autographs. Millions and millions of us were saying, you know what, we want that petition. Y'all better give Martin Luther King his holiday. That's what happened. And the Bank of International Settlements and the IMF said, you know what, what's going on over, over there on the land? Yeah, okay, we got them. So we can set up special drawing rights. We can sell all, everything, whatever we need to do to the other nations of the earth, we can do it because we, they sleep. And we have their consent to do it. So now we don't need a gold standard. Let's, let's, let's boot that off. They're probably going to sleep for another 50 years. So let's boot, let's just, let's just put this, uh, Nixon collapse of the Bretton Woods. Let's make that a 50 year deal because we already know they sleep hard. They're going to party. We're going to have a war on terror and a war on drugs, and we're going to put them in jail. We're going to do everything we got to do to get them to wake up. That's what happened after they got all of those autographs from the sleeping heirs. They said, we don't need a gold standard. We don't need it. Why do we need it when the gold is there? We got them. And then they told the rest of the nations of the earth, F you, we're not giving you any gold back, none. We have them and those autographs and their consent for another 50 years. And that's how valuable our autographs are. When you put your autograph on a, a more sovereign delarium, everybody does what you tell them that they're going to do it. When you do it as a court action, you just have to watch. Just watch. Because that's the gold. 
our agreement, our full faith and credit. Now, they, they sat up and told us that, our full faith and credit. That's why at the beginning of our meetings, we put it out there that our full faith, credit, allegiance, heart, love, soul, mind, all of that is with our own selves, our nation. And we're proving it by using more sovereign delirium and doing it as court action. With our sovereign autograph in red and all lowercase letters and our white red thumbprint. That was a bold move, but that ought to tell you how tight our signatures are, our autographs. Our autographs can do miracles, and the whole earth know it. When they saw that whole Martin Luther King thing taking place and all those autographs going, they already knew what was going to happen. That's why they were like, wait a minute, can we get our gold back from you all? Because we gave you gold. Can we get our and, – and what did they say? What did Nixon say to them? We don't have to give you anything because the more said we don't have to. Our God said we don't have to. Our Creator said we don't have to because they're going to sleep for another 50 years. And thankfully, thankfully, I'm so grateful that our teachers woke up because they woke up decades ago. <clears throat> decades ago. And started teaching, and then they were tested. Our teachers went through tests. They went through the jail test, asked them. Our teachers went through that whole jail test and came out this shining like gold. I'm so glad they woke up. That's why I, they will always be honored. Always, all of our teachers will always be honored, all of them, because they were willing to do that even because it wasn't that many of us awake as there are now. And they said, we don't care how many of you are awake or not awake, we're going to stand. So where are we now? And this is why we took the vote today, because we brought this all the way back around to what he did in 1971, saying we don't need the errors, uh, we don't need the gold standard, we don't have to give you no gold, you or you or you, they told China and everybody, we don't have to give you nothing. We got their autograph and their consent. So here it is, exactly 50 years, and we're awake. And we have said, okay, we have our own money. We're using our autograph. And today, we pegged the more, the gold back. See, that's what made it gold back in the first place is that we're willing to sign it, to autograph it, and put it out there. No, hopefully you can see what's been going on, okay? That's what this whole COVID thing is about, is the heirs are waking up. Let's see how far they go in their wake up because we already know. And that's why they keep dragging things out and dragging things out and dragging things out to see how far, see if we would go back to sleep, which we will not do, period. We're not, mm -mm. too late anyway. And that's why what we did today with our vote is so historic and historic and monumental. And the things that we've built up to this point with the gold standards and with the, the, the liens and the court actions that we've all been doing, that's why it's so monumental because the whole earth knows that, oh, we don't have to go through another 50 years of, of contracting with these United States corporation companies and them breaking every contract they ever put out there and us trying to deal with them back and forth. We don't have to do that another 50 years because the heirs 
are awake and they're proving that they're awake. So that's where we are. And it just happened three weeks ago. August 15, 2021, made exactly 50 years to the day that Nixon did what he did and that today, and, and we've been reversing it the whole time, but we actually put the nail in that coffin today. And now all we have to do is just keep doing our demonstrations that we're doing, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. We, we, we already won. And now we're starting to get uh, Infocentia and they thank you so much for what you sent me. Uh, we're starting to get um, hints. And, you know, we can see. We, we use the pineal eye to see before we even use these two. We use the pineal to see. And we see that um, acknowledgement is there as it should be as it should be. And and the only only acknowledgement that that our ancestors ever wanted from us is the acknowledgement that that's mentioned in the Declaration of Independence. The Supreme Judge of the Earth, that's all more. We're the High Court. We're the Article Three Sovereign Supreme Court. All more. So today we are, and, and, and again, our ancestors will always give us a choice prior to the massive events that result in either long periods of enslavement, fires, earthquakes, famine, disease, and death, or long, and this is where we're at and where we're going. It's already here. Long periods of prosperity, wealth, long life, happiness, growth, high technology, high sciences, and the best of all things. That's where we're going. That's where we are because we have chosen not to ever go back to black capitalism. We're being given that same choice today, and we keep making the right choice, because that's an ongoing choice. It's ongoing. With that being said, uh, oh, and by the way, <clears throat> we know that that whole Christopher Columbus story is, is just it's anthropomorphic. That's the childlike understanding of the truth of what happened. And here's a little side note for you. On the calendar, on the Islamic calendar, the year 1491 and 1492, I'm sorry, on the Gregorian calendar, the year 1491 and 1492, was actually 1775 and 1776 on the Coptic calendar. Think about that and what that really means. More. What does that really mean? That 1492 was actually 1776. What does that really mean? Because we know about the Declaration of Independence in 1776. And we know about what, quote, unquote, Christopher Columbus did in 1492. We just talked about it. And some more, some more didn't go out to sea. Some more said, we're going to stay the red people, the red nation. So whenever you hear the hybrids talking about, uh, the hybrids, whenever you hear the modern Europeans talking about red China, we already talked about China and what that really means. That's cold words, cold language. So um, with that being said, are there any questions or comments regarding um, the calendar that we brought forth today and um, 
just one moment. Let me make sure that we can. Uh, I'm going to open up the chat. Now you see why there was such a push and the trolls are coming so hard and heavy. That's why the trolls come here so hard and heavy, because they already know we, we, we're we reversing everything they did and, and putting it where it's supposed to be. All of us are. And we're doing it together. So um, the chat is open and... Let me see. I'll go ahead and open up the now you see though why why there was such you know interference in the things that we're doing. Because we can see the the, the whole picture. We see the whole the big picture. We see it. And when we see the big picture, we know what to do about it. But see, the big picture happens in the spirit realm and the um, the natural realm. And that's why the spirit work, clearing our energy, and even if we're, you know, if we think that we're upset with other more, clear the energy and and, you know, do what, whatever you have to do to get that energy cleared, okay? So are there any questions or comments regarding the things that we brought forth today? Islam. Islam, members. Yes, ma'am. You were talking about the, you know, other people coming from other countries traveling here. Would that be a scenario with all the people they're bringing here from Iran? How how is that? How would that change our population here? So, the people that they're bringing from Afghanistan. That's not what you right. that is what what the media is putting for. It's not what the media is putting for. Actually what's happening is those who are original and indigenous to this land, remember the prophecy said that in the last day we were going to come back to our homeland. Yes. So that that's who's really coming. But the United okay. States Corporation Company has to put a cover over that so that People don't get nervous and all of that. So that the Christians won't. The the commercial Christians. But see, the commercial Christians already know what's happening. So yes, those are those are the original indigenous people. But think about it, too, Empress. Barack Obama was doing the same thing. He was bringing wars from Syria and from um, other places that were supposedly war torn. And okay. then Trump was letting our brothers and sisters from South America come up. Because they're they're all coming here to assist us in whatever it is that we need once we get to a certain point. Because they're the heirs too. They're already helping. Okay. And let me tell you how let me tell you how they're helping. They come here supposedly with nothing. And what happens is when they come here, housing and resources and the way for that to happen is being created for them, which is automatically going to create housing and resources for us. So they're just clearing the way, okay, so that more never have to go through any of the stuff we've been through these last few, you know, Asleep. Okay. They're gotcha. making it very easy. They're clearing the path. And okay. historically, their their bloodline and birthright too. 
you know. Right. Um, if you think about it, too, in the news story, didn't they say that, that the quote-unquote Taliban was not letting anybody come through that airport that that didn't have the right travel documents? They said travel documents. They were not letting people who had United States Corporation company stuff come through there. They were not letting them out because they didn't have the proper documentation to come here. Oh, okay. That's what that really was. Mm-hmm. Okay. They were bringing yeah, indigenous wars back here. Yeah. Okay, that just hit my mind while you were talking. You know, Islam. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what that is, and that's why the modern Europeans, some of them are so upset and, you know, they want him out and blah, 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 because that's not what what was reported in the media is not what happened. And the ones that they're putting forth as the quote, unquote, Taliban is actually Moors over there who have done the same thing we're do- we did, which is come outside of capitalism and get back on our own land. Okay. That, that's all that was, which I think is there. It's beautiful the way that they're, that everything is unfolding, you know, in our favor. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Empress. That was a, that was a good question. Thank you. Yep. It's not. They um, and let me tell you, and and I'll just say this as a quick side note: Barack Obama, he he put the Syrians and and the other Moors that had been scattered over there. Because remember, in the ancient text, it says we will be scattered all over the earth. And then in the last day, we'd be, we'd be brought back to our homeland. He put the Syrians and everybody right out there in Utah, where all of our stuff is, the oh, Grand right. Canyon and, the, and, and Arizona and, and, and out there in the places that, that we, we had left those, we had been, we moved from those places. But our stuff is still there. So Barack put more is out there. Okay. And they, you know, so our ancestors know what they're doing. They're, they they know what they're doing. That's why I trust them one zillion percent. If that's even a number. Because they know exactly what they're doing. We just have to keep doing what we're doing. I'm just amazed that the, there there was a group of indigenous nations that met last weekend and they're doing the they they agreed to do the same thing that we've already done. I love it. The timing I is just perfect. It's perfect. If our ancestors got this whole thing worked out, all we have to do is listen to them from within us because they're not out there in the ether. They're in us. All we have to do is listen, you know, and keep moving, keep moving together. We have to do it together because that's how the estate is ministered. It's all it's all okay. of it together. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Are there any other questions or comments um, of any kind, etc.? Okay. Here's um. With that being said, um, put out as much delirium as you can. Oh, and also please go under this video and click like and maybe do a comment, even if it's just an Islam under the video. And that will, we want to try using the um, the algorithm because one of the more called me and said, hey, you know, you need to be using the algorithm because that will help, you know, do what you need to do in terms of getting it out there more to more people. So I said, sure, we'll use the algorithm. So um, everyone who who hears this, please click <clears throat> like or share or, you know, Islam nobility. Okay, I thought I heard uh, Justice Williams. With that being said, peace and grand rising to the sovereign, original, and divine. Islam. Natural, divine. Islam, Empress. 
I just wanted to say thank you for this presentation today. You filled a lot of uh, holes that you know I've been living with for years, and uh, and it all it all makes sense to me. So I just want to thank you for the presentation, Islam. I yield. You're welcome, and thank you so much for what you send. Please keep sending it because it's you you your eye is almost a twin of my eye in terms of the stuff that you see in in what you send. That's beautiful. Very beautiful. <laughs> Anyone else? And you're right. I do see through what's happening through those writings. Yes. Uh, the third eye does yes. see. I know exactly what's going on. It's long. Yes. Yes. It's long. Anyone else? Use the Delarium more. Use it. Demonstrate it. Because it's a wrap. All we have to do now is join the Delarium with the nations who said that they we're on the gold standard, too. Those are our brothers and sisters. All we have to do is, is say to them, okay, we pegged ours to gold. Go ahead and peg yours to gold, and let's do some exchange. I'm excited for us. So with that being said, peace and grand rising to the sovereign, original, indigenous, natural, divine heirs, and we'll be back here on Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern. Thank you. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Grand rising. Peace, more. Grand rising. Grand rising, more. Peace and grand rising. Grand rising, Peace and grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Peace and love, Harris. Grand rising.